going on, people? Welcome back to Curtis Shaw TV, back with another live stream. Happy Friday, people. The weekend is back. Arsenal are back again. And um, it only seems like yesterday, man. We're just getting over the last game against Luton and we're right back to it. And this one's going to be a lot more difficult. That is for sure, man. Brighton away from home. The Danny Welbeck derby. And um, we've had some mixed results there over the years. We got a good win there last year. But we have um, we have um, been beaten there before in the past, so not going to be an easy game. Big up to everyone locked in. Hope you're well. Yeah, a few minutes late today. I can't lie, man. I was the organisation was not perfect. But hey, we're here, people. Better late than never, but never late is better, you know. Um, it's Friday, then it's Saturday, Sunday. Da, da, da. It's the weekend, people. The sun is out as well. I can't believe it. Um, and let's hope the sun's out for Arsenal this weekend, man. Big weekend. And um, listen, man, what was that Chelsea v Man United game last night? No wonder they called it the mid-off. Two meaty teams in some crazy wild um, game. No, I don't think it was a great game because there was so much quality. It was a great game because they're both a mess. It was two messy teams playing each other. 2 nil up, Chelsea. 3-2 up, Man United. 4-3 up Chelsea. Great ending, Cole Palmer. You would never think looking at Cole Palmer, would you? He's um he's from St. Kitts. His dad's from St. Kitts. But um yeah, man, what a season he's having, to be fair. For all that billion that Chelsea have spent, the English player that they signed from um from Manchester City has probably been their best signing. But Man United and Ten Hag are an absolute shambles. Um Southgate being linked with a Man United job. I don't know if that's any better or worse, but yeah, two meaty teams in a mess of a game. And um, it's interesting because as Arsenal fans, we actually need a good performance from Man United this weekend. They play Liverpool on Sunday. I'll be doing a watch along for that. And um, looking at them yesterday, man, they're not giving me a lot of hope that they can do anything in that game. Although Liverpool did make hard work of it last night. 3-1 victory against Sheffield United. But I think there was 12 minutes to go. It was 1-1, so... Um, yeah, it will be interesting. Ten Hag's comments after the game. I've seen the man talking about how exciting the game was and that. I'm like, bro, you just lost in the 94th minute. You should not be talking about how exciting the game was. That's the only thing I'm hoping, Pyro. Like, I'm hoping Man United, such a bad way to lose that, um, you know, they, they bounce back against Liverpool, um, you know, which we hope. And yeah. J. Cole, by the way, for the hip-hop fans, he's responded to Kendrick this morning. Um, so if you're a hip-hop fan, man, that's what I'm saying. I've definitely got to start doing hip-hop reaction videos on here as well. We'll get there eventually. NBA, hip-hop, and gaming at some stage. But yeah, J. Cole has dissed um, Kendrick. Um, anyway, let's get into the show today. Mikel Arteta did his press conference um, about 9 o'clock this morning. Um... Obviously, because it's an away game, the team will travel down there tonight, stay in the hotel. Usually, they do the press conference in the afternoon. Um, but they did it about 9, 9.15 this morning, and uh, he had a few things to say. So, we're going to get into press conference reaction shortly. Um, but we'll look at the Premier League table. Let's have a look at the Premier League table. This is a pivotal weekend in the Premier League title race. There's some interesting games Who's going to drop points first? I don't believe that Liverpool, City and Arsenal will go through these last eight games without dropping points. They're going to slip up at some stage. Now, Liverpool go to Man United, um, Arsenal go to Brighton and Manchester City go to Crystal Palace. Now, Crystal Palace has been a bogey team for Man City over the years, but I just, I'm not confident that this Man City... Uh, against this Palace will drop points. Um, you know, I think when they had Zaha and Elise was playing and Eze was fit, but I read that Elise is out injured for this game. I think Eze is playing. Um, so I think City will roll them over. And yeah, Man United, I think, is Maguire the only fit centre-back at the whole club? Lindelof's out, Lissandro's out. Varane came off injured. They brought Johnny Evans on for Varane. And then Johnny Evans came off injured. So Harry Maguire is the only fit centre-back at Man United, unless Varane's injury is not that bad. So how are they going to get a decent back four on the pitch against Liverpool? Big up Shimos, who said, can you give me a shout-out, bro? It's my birthday. Big up on your birthday, bro. Um, 
concerned FC Man United. Yeah, Andy, big Liverpool fan he is, but yeah, it's an interesting one. I mean, listen, we go to Brighton. Brighton have been a little bit inconsistent, but they're in the mix. You know, they could get a Conference League place. They're only actually five points off Man United in the Europa League place. So they do have a lot to fight for in this game. They've only won one of their last five games, Brighton. So they're very inconsistent. So usually Brighton away, you know, on that pebble beach, I would be, um, you know, quite weary. And I am a little bit weary, but I don't know. I, I do have a confidence that we're going to beat Brighton. I don't know if I... Um, should be as confident as I am. It will be a lot harder than that Luton game was. Um, but I've just got a feeling we're going to beat them. I, mean, I think we're in the rhythm at the moment, but any any slip-up could be costly at this stage. Nick says here, Brighton have only lost one game at home this season, which is, you know, you don't want to be reading that. Um, but they have only won one of their last five. I was looking at some of their results this season. They're a very inconsistent team. Like they're, they're easily capable of scoring four or five, as conceding four or five. It's five thirty kickoff as well, which is always an interesting dynamic when you're the late fixture. I mean, looking at some of their results, they only lost two one to Liverpool. They drew nil nil with Brentford in the week. Um, they lost four nil away at Roma, three nil away at Fulham. Um, they beat Sheffield United five nil. Beat Palace 4-1, but they lost 4-0 to Luton. Um, yeah, they've had some... They beat Tottenham 4-2 at home. And they did lose 2-0 to Arsenal at the Emirates earlier on in the season as well. They lost to Chelsea. They've been very inconsistent this year. They've had a few beatdowns, but as you said, not many of them at home. So we need to do our thing. I look at it like this. We're better than them. We're in better form than them. There's no excuse for Arsenal. There's no excuse... But will Liverpool or Manchester City drop points this weekend? It's becoming intriguing with eight games to go. And uh, it's a massive week ahead. Champions League and Europa League games for these three teams as well. Liverpool um, play Atalanta on Thursday. Um, and Arsenal play Bayern Munich on Tuesday, which is an absolute monster of a game. Man City play Real Madrid as well. Does Zerbi very overrated, said Southland? Yeah, I'm... I'm not sure about De Zerbi. You know, he's being linked with um he was being linked with Real Madrid at one stage. I just don't see him as that level. Uh this is a oof, what do you think about this comment? This is controversial. Rhys Martin says, Big C, as an Arsenal fan, I feel Cole Palmer is more to his game than Saka. I think he is a really good footballer. There's a there's a lot of things being said about Saka at the moment because, let's face it, Saka's not in his best run of form. Um, and Foden scored a hat-trick and Cole Palmer scored a hat-trick. I'm going to say something here. And I'm never really biased on this channel, but we don't want to get carried away. You have to look at Saka like this. And this is me being totally honest. When I look at Saka... And I look at his qualities. He is technically a very gifted footballer, but it's not its not necessarily... He's not incredible in terms of technical ability. He's powerful. He's strong. He can shoot. He gets in great positions. He's not technically as good as Phil Foden. Foden is more pleasing on the eye. It looks more effortless. I think we have to understand with Cole Palmer... Cole Palmer came under Pep, you know, so he's got that technical thing as well. But you've got to look at Cole Palmer. Cole Palmer scored eight penalties this year, bro. Cole Palmer's playing for Chelsea in a pretty much low-pressure situation. I mean, Chelsea are now 10th in the league. They celebrated that win last night, and rightly so, you win any game, but they're not under no pressure. They're not doing anything this season. Eight penalties out of 16... Saka's been carrying this Arsenal team on his shoulders pretty much since Aubameyang walked out of the door. So, listen, I hear you, maybe technically and how they dribble and things like that. I, I understand. But ask Cole Palmer to play for Arsenal and be the main man for two years. I don't think he could do it. Ask Phil Foden to turn up on a regular basis for Arsenal and carry us. I'm not sure he could do it. People have to understand, Foden can turn up once or twice a month. 
No one will talk about the other two games where he doesn't do anything. Because, guess what? Haaland will score a hat-trick. Kevin De Bruyne will score a couple. Bernardo will score a couple. This is, you know, the, the circumstances are a lot different. Cole Palmer, baller. No doubt about it. I don't need to disrespect him to big up Saka. He hasn't been in the situations that Saka's been in, bro. He hasn't been in Euros finals for England under huge pressure. He hasn't been in that pressure cooker yet. So, Cole Palmer, baller. Saka, relax yourself. You can't, Palmer can't talk to Saka. He can't talk. Saka's been in the trenches, bro. Saka's been here for a few years putting up these numbers. So, yeah, I, I'm I'm not going to allow people to do that to Saka. We, we're very quick to forget what the guy has done. The guy's produced a hell of a lot for this football club. And I guarantee you now, if Saka was to leave Arsenal, all the big boys would be in for him. So, listen, let, let's, let's defend him. Two years ago, 11 goals, 7 assists. Last year, 14 goals, 11 assists. This year, 13 goals, 8 assists. That's only in the Premier League. In a team that's been, you know, trying to figure itself out for the last couple of years. So, I rate Cole Palmer. Baller. He's putting up numbers. He probably scored 20 league goals this year. But he needs, you know, Saka's, Saka's been in them trenches, people. Flavour of the month, you're right. It's one of them. Um, but listen, big weekend in football. Big weekend. Listen, Saka's not even having his best season. And he's going to break his record, I would imagine, for goals scored this year. So, he's becoming that clutch player. And I guarantee you, people, the other thing you have to understand, every player, that every club that plays against Saka now puts two players on him. His reputation is there now. You play against Arsenal, double up on Saka. You know, Cole Palmer's not at that level yet. Cole Palmer was a squad player at Man City. He's gone to Chelsea. You ain't doubling up on Cole Palmer. They might start doing it next season because of what he's doing this year. He ain't doing this year. He's been one v one, but he is a baller. I rate Foden. I rate Palmer. I rate Saka. They're all good. But um, can we do a poll? Foden, Saka, Palmer. Why not? Why not? Who's the best player out of them three? Let's go for that one. Um, the the people are asking, who's the best player? Out of these three, Palmer, Foden, Saka. There you go. Polls there. Get involved. And let's see who you say. Uh, Cole Palmer. There you go. Polls there. Who's the best player out of these three? Saka, Foden, Palmer. Bang. First poll of the day. Right. Let's look ahead. More polls than an ATL strip club, people. There you go. Uh, first couple super chats. Big C, you wanted Kai Seda. Uh, I can neither confirm nor deny, Ziggy. <laughs> I have no recollection of what you're saying. Um, I actually tweeted it last night. I said, I can't believe we nearly bought this fraud over Declan Rice. I'll be honest. I'll be totally honest, right? And I don't I don't hide away from it. Um, I was Caicedo over Rice. Um, caught up in the hype of Brighton and the style of football. I thought it was Kante and Xhaka part two. And uh, no, nah, it definitely wasn't. No, I got to give Adu credit. Imagine spending 115 million on Kai Seda, giving simple passes away. So yeah, big up Edu, man. Uh, Guna Carlos, don't care about form or home record. Do your job, bro. We're better than them. I don't care about their form. I don't care about their style of play. Turn up in Brighton and deal with them, bro. If you can't, then we're gonna be in a problem. Salman said uh, Kai Seda got the family taken care of. Exactly, the ten siblings are. A fed and balling now. Um, Ox said, Big C, I think ESR might be like Cole Palmer if he leaves Arsenal. Listen, he ain't going nowhere, bro. He saved his career the other night. Uh, considering his fee, Caicedo has been trash. He has. Enzo hasn't been good either. Uh, SLD said, Caicedo plays like you after a couple of red stripes. Hey, man, listen, big up, bro. He he's playing like he's on red stripes, to be fair. Anyway, let's look ahead. Let's look ahead. Uh, do you know what? Before we do look ahead to the game, let's get into some of the transfer discussion. And uh, we'll do the main one. I want to know what you guys think about this. And um, it's involving former Manchester United goalkeeper David De Gea. Uh, and I want to know your thoughts on this. 
According to Court Offside, which is a meaty source again, Arsenal could make a move for former Manchester United goalkeeper David De Gea as a replacement for Aaron Ramsdale. Um, he's a free agent and hasn't played for anybody since leaving Manchester United in the summer. De Gea is 33 years of age. Apparently, he's asking for a wage of around £180,000 a week. Would the Spanish connection, Arteta, David Rea, would it bring him to Arsenal? Now, I'm going to be honest. A lot of people in the comments were like, oh, no, no, don't want him. I actually think this would be a decent signing. I think this would be a decent bit of business. And I'm going to break it down. Number one, you sell Ramsdale for £30 million plus. You need a backup goalkeeper, somebody that's probably good enough to challenge Rea, but may be on the bench. Our last second choice goalkeeper was Matt Turner, people. The standards have been on the floor, right? The standards have been on the floor. David De Gea, as a second choice goalkeeper, you're getting him on a free. He's got lots of experience, right? I actually think that's not a bad deal. Now, the wage at 180, I'm not sure. I think you've got to get it lower. You can't pay a backup goalkeeper 180 racks a week. That don't make sense. But the way I'm looking at it is I want the money to go towards the players that we need more. I want the midfielder to get big money. I want the striker to get the big money. So rather than maybe buying a goalkeeper for 15, 20 million, why not get De Gea on a free? Good pedigree, good backup keeper. Listen. You're never really going to have an... I mean, people saying he's not good with his feet. You're not likely to get a great second-choice goalkeeper, are you? Ortega at Man City is good. I'm seeing rumours he wants to leave. Liverpool have got Kelleher. He's not bad. You know, I don't think you're going to get a great second-choice goalkeeper, especially for cheap. I'm going to be honest. I would take him if you could reduce them wages. I'm going to have to do another poll. Let's end this poll. This one is really interesting, and I was intrigued to see what you thought about this. Um, let's end this. 62% say Saka, 31 Foden, the rest Cole Palmer. The Arsenal bias has uh, handled business, as I expected. Would you take David De Gea on a free? Would you sign De Gea on a free? Yes or no? I think you've got to remember... I'm pretty sure this guy had the um, clean sheet record last year in the Premier League. So he is. it's not like the guy's just completely washed up and finished. But it's interesting. I want to know what you guys think. 33 years of age, David De Gea. I personally would take him. I would take him. If you can get that wage a little bit lower, you get him on a free. Great experience. He's better than Matt Turner, who was our second choice keeper last year. Yeah, I agree. The wages have to drop down a little bit. Man said left there, where I'm there. But, yo, I, I get it. Maybe, yeah, it would be nice to buy a young keeper who... But listen, just think, as Thomas just said for banter, we could potentially say to Man United, our second choice keeper is better than your first choice keeper. Because that's how bad anana has been. He hasn't been no better than um, De Gea was. Um, but it's interesting. It's interesting. People saying, hasn't our game been postponed? I, I hope not, bro, because i got a watch-along set up for it. Now nah, the game's on. Listen, Keros, I mean, you're probably better than Matt Turner. That's how bad he was. He's on the bench for Forrest now. 100k a week max also. I just think it would be smart for Arsenal. We're going to have a... I mean, people saying he's washed. He wasn't that bad last season. He did make a couple mistakes. We're looking at him as second choice, people. I'm looking at him to play six games. Seven games for Arsenal. I don't want him to come here and play 20 games for us. I want him to play eight games if we need a bit of cover. I mean, younger goalkeeper from the academy. I don't think we have a particularly good goalkeeper from the academy. If you're looking for a first choice, no problem. I want better. If you're looking at him as second choice and backup, I think that's good experience. I think if you're bringing him in... For Carabao Cup and FA Cup games, I think that's a decent second choice. It also doesn't cost you anything rather than spending. We're being linked with that guy from Spain the other week. I think they wanted 15 million for him. Um, 
I, I personally think this would be smart business. In a summer where I think the money's got to go towards the striker, got to go towards the uh, right winger, and got to go towards the centre midfielder. Mohamed, I just want to say, by the way, my apologies. You gave, I think, 20 um, memberships out. I just ran the intro on the last show, was ending it, and I saw you'd given out 20 memberships. I never got to thank you, so big up to you, bro. Thank you for the super chat. Three point collecting. I don't know where we... I don't know if we go there and stink out the place against Brighton. I hope we can play some decent football. George said, isn't it funny how Saka is always the benchmark when other players are being compared to it? And that tells you everything, don't it? That tells you everything. He's the guy. Everyone's going, oh, Palmer's better. Foden's better. I mean, you know, it shows he's already set pace. He's already set pace, people. Uh, <laughs> James Bond said, because what do you under immediate man? Yeah. Yo, relax, man. De Gea on the bench, man. Better than Matt Turner, bro. Matt Turner was worse than Tina Turner. What's love got to do with it? Who needs a... Uh, Matt Turner does very well for USA, bro. He don't do well in the Premier League, I tell you that. Even Forest fans are messaging me saying, yo, how the hell did you sell this guy? Um, it's an interesting one. I'm just looking at the poll to see what you think. I mean, listen, some of you are saying he's just washed up. You don't want him. Um, some of you are saying you would take him. Listen, I, I think it's... Um, I think it's not bad business. I think it's not bad business. I'm going to be honest. Um, we're going to have double Dave. Um, David Rayo and David Rayo, yeah. DDG made mistakes. Then Ramsdale, hell no. 100% get him. Rather play Heinz. Man like Heinz, you know. I'd rather have Turkish in goal than De Gea. <laughs> Oh, uh, dear. Right, listen, we'll move on from it anyway. I think we'll see what the poll... We'll leave the poll there for another 10 minutes, see what you guys think. The United banter, um, we would get a lot... Listen, I think we'd be bantering them. I'd say, listen, you signed an honour for 50 million. He's even worse. No, no, we don't want Fred. We definitely don't want Fred. Um, I would take Chesney back, but don't Chesney start for Juventus. If he's starting for Juventus, surely he ain't coming to Arsenal. Listen, first of all, I don't think this deal would happen anyway. Um, I don't see why De Gea, at 33 years of age, would want to come to uh, Arsenal and sit on the bench. Surely whatever club he goes to, he wants to, he wants to play. I mean, looking at it, it's unbelievable that he hasn't played all season. And it's got to be down to the wage demands. Maybe people think 180 grand is too much, but surely there would have been clubs around Europe that would have taken him if he'd have lowered them wage demands. So uh, it's it's a bit stupid from him, really. But interesting that the link's there. Second bit of transfer news as well. An honour is good, Big C. It's just the defence. Bro, did you see the first goal last night? Straight through his hands. I don't think an honour is that good, bro. i got to be honest. It's great with a ball at his feet, but... He's not all that. Uh, Fabrizio has done a report this morning on YouTube. Uh, this is what he had to say. I'm always receiving many questions on Victor Osimhen. Many clubs around Europe appreciate him, like Chelsea, PSG, and also Arsenal. But he says Arsenal are focused on players like Jokerez or Sesco. Sesco is also on the list at Chelsea. So now, within the space of a week... We've now heard Ornstein and Fabrizio say that Arsenal's focus is on the likes of Jokerez and Sesko and that we're not really looking at Victor Osimhen. Um, also, David Ornstein said that he didn't think Arsenal would go for Tony. So it's looking like Osimhen and Tony are not on Arsenal's list. Um, it's looking like Jokerez or Sesko. Sesko, for me, from what I've seen... I'm not totally convinced by him. I w yeah, let him go to Chelsea. If it was between them two, I'm taking Jokerez. Um Seems more mobile, seems to have a bit more about him. This guy, Sesco, I, I know he's six foot five and that, but I'm not convinced by him. I mean, some of you saying get Sesco, but um, I think we'll do a third poll of the day. Let's finish, third poll. Let's end the De Gea one. We've had that up. If it was a straight shootout, Jokerez or Sesco? 68% of you said you would take David De Gea on a free, by the way. Um, 
if it's just a t uh, a two horse race, which striker would you prefer? Jokerez or Sesko? This will be the last poll of the day, unless something else. Sesko or Jokerez? I mean, for me, it's it's Jokerez, Glockerez as they call him. Um, but he is more expensive. Remember, Sesko is forty three million release clause. Sesko is around eighty million, but. Just get the right one. Uh, SG said Tony is the answer. Sesco all day, says someone. Uh, Jokerez says Callum. Uh, Blue said, is this even a debate? I mean, listen, i got to be honest. I haven't seen enough of um, Sesco to completely write him off, but I'm just not convinced by him. Jokerez only for the celebration. Mr. Arsenal says Jimenez, 21 goals in 26 games, 22-year-old, no-brainer. Tony, short-term, Sesco, long-term. Um, like 50 said, get the strap, says Bonolo. Big up. Rather have Tesco. <laughs> I'd say I'd rather have Tesco than Sesco. Um, I'm not sure about Sesco. I'm, I'm not, but some of you may have watched more of him. you got a better insight on him and uh, whether you know he could come to Arsenal and do the business. But looks a bit... I don't know, he is big, six foot five, but I don't know. He's not prolific. But then I did say that about Isak, you know. I did say about Isak that his goal record didn't impress me and all of a sudden we all we all rate him now he's in the Prem. This is the thing though, Sesco will be a development striker, says Jason, and I just don't think we've got time to sign a development striker. We need to we need to hit the ground running. Uh, South London's finest says, Sesco is a raw blank canvas Arteta might think he can shape him. That's a good point. Gid said, I prefer Jokerez, but Big C, don't judge Sesco. He's cold. My Austrian cousin seen him in that league. Thinks he'll be world class in a few years. Do we have that few years? What happens in the time being? You know, we don't want to sign it. I mean, Nick said he's, Sesco is a Havertz um, type of striker. Isak would just seem to fit at Arsenal. I have to admit, I think Isak really would suit Arsenal's style, but I just think Newcastle are not going to allow him to go. I think if if Newcastle are forced to sell somebody, I think they'll rather sell Bruno Gimmeresh than sell um, you know, their main striker. Callum Wilson's being linked with a move, so I don't think they would let both strikers go. Uh, Cash said, Jao Pedro, who's having a really good season before the injury. So, be interesting. Anyway, that's enough of the, the striker talk. I'll leave the vote there for five minutes. Let me know what you think. Salman said, send him to Colney. Um, if he needs development, we need ballers. You're right, bro. We're, you're right. We haven't got time um, to wait two years for him to become world class. Would you take Bruno Gimaraes for 70 million? I do rate him. I do rate him. He's a good player. Being linked with Real Madrid. Um, right, people. It's just after lunchtime. Waffle settings. The boss is back. Mickey Rolls, the boss. c c c c c man music is back. In full effect again. The co-man to the world and back. Brighton, the Pebble Beach. It's not a very nice beach, man. You don't want to walk on pebbles, do you, really? You just want sand. Um, Brighton. Are we going to go down there and have a fun day out? Or is the title race going to be mashed up by Danny Welbeck and co? Hopefully, we handle business. We beat them last season. I am confident we're going to beat them. I am. Um, but they will be dangerous. If we play like we did in that second half against Luton, although I'm not going to I'm not gonna panic about that, actually. I think we just controlled the game. I just think we've got to perform at a slightly higher level. As I was saying... Um, the last few games, we've more gone through the motions where I think from tomorrow, we've got to start to kick into gear, really. And what I mean by that is, if you look at our last few results, Luton, first half did really well. Second half wasn't great. Man City, nah, defended well. Porto, 1-0, we were okay. Brentford 2-1, we made hard work of it. We haven't really played well since Sheffield United away, 6-0 on the 4th of March. And when you think our next few games, Brighton away, Bayern Munich at home, Aston Villa at home, Bayern Munich away, the level's going to have to go up. So, listen, let's hope we do and uh, let's see. The Book of Eli said the the stories could be a smokescreen to grab Tony. I'd be happy with that. I want Tony at Arsenal. 
Ben said, I'd rather take a gamble on Isak. Yeah, I like Isak as well, but I just think the price, the injury record, I don't think there's any willingness from Newcastle to do business. Ne Never said, Bruno is a thug. Maybe we need some thugs at Arsenal, man, I'm telling you. Uh, right, let's get into what uh, Mikel said, co-man business. On Bakayo Saka's fitness, he said, we will know now, we have a training session in a few hours, and we will know whether he is fit or not. Everyone else seems okay. On how happy he was on Wednesday after his changes, he said, I was obviously very pleased with the result and the performance, the fact that everybody responded in the way that we expected. When you make changes, there is a possibility that they haven't played much. I think the boys were really good. Big up my bro, Akeem. He said, nothing to worry about in the second half. They treated it like a training match. And I hear you. I, I hear you. I do agree. I think we just conserved energy. But I think we will have to go up to another level. Bruno Guimaraes is a thug. If he joins Arsenal, I shall embrace him. A thug will be fine if he joins Arsenal. Sometimes you need them players. I used to say back in the day, I can't stand Diego Costa. But I'll be honest, I used to look at Diego Costa and think, I wish he played for Arsenal. So sometimes you need a few of them players in your team, man. Them guys win your titles. Vieira was trying to fight Roy Keane. We didn't mind it, you know? Um, so, yeah, I, I don't have a problem with it, to be honest. Uh, why is Edu obsessed with Sesko? I don't get it. Um, he's nearly half the price of Jokerez, and there's a release clause. Perfect. No negotiation. Nice and cheap. Job done. There's your striker. He can get that deal done in about a day, and he saves money. Doesn't have to ask for 85 million to buy Jokerez, 43 million to buy Sesko. I've always said, Mikel, buy the striker that you want. I don't want you to just buy the cheap option. I want you to buy whoever you're looking at and going, that's my striker, get him. If that's Osamen, Tony, Jokerez, whoever it is, get them. That's what I want. I want the manager to get his number one target. Costa was a menace, was a proper menace. E. Ross said that grease ball. Bro, he was, he was on violence, but he was a baller. Diego Costa was a serious footballer, man. Horrible. He must have been a nightmare to play against for defenders, I've got to be honest. Um, right, let's skip through this. On if Smith Rowe came bouncing into training, he said, you could see that. I think an example is Reese. In the previous game, he was not in the squad. Next game, he's ready to start. If someone doesn't react the way he did after, you are not ready to perform. So I'm really pleased with that kind of reaction in the team. Emil was really strong in the game. Not so much Reese Nelson, I'm afraid. On if our four away games are where the title will be won or lost, he said, yes, but at home as well, we have the Champions League games. We have some big games at home. Every game in this league is difficult. You look at last night, what happened again. Everybody is suffering to win because the level is so high. We're going to have a really tough opponent in Brighton. You know that, so we'll prepare well and try to be better than them. And whether he was watching the two games simultaneously last night, he said, I was watching a bit of both, to be fair, until late, but the Chelsea Man United game one was worth it. Until the end, it was fantastic. It's unbelievable the league that we are involved in. It's a joy, the level and quality of players and the show they put on. It's fantastic. Whether he was watching in a Sheffield United shirt. <laughs> See, I like that one. That's worth going to university for, to ask him in a press conference. Um... He just said no, so he, he maybe he didn't see the funny side of it. Maybe he was smirking, I don't know. I didn't watch it. On Thomas Partey wanting to stay at the club, he said he better have his head here because we are playing for big things. That's what we expect. We need him because he's a top player and a very important player for us. You could see on the pitch the impact he can have for us. He's our player. He's got one more year on his contract and I'm really happy with him. I did say, people, Partey will probably stay next season. Uh, <laughs> listen, you know me, information and entertainment. I like someone asking him that. It's better than saying, oh, how have they trained this week? Oh, yeah, they've trained amazing. Oh, great. We found out a lot. Was you wearing a Sheffield United shirt? I don't mind that. That's worth a, a four-year, you know, course at university for, for these journalists. Um... On Kai Havertz's contribution, he said, I'm very pleased. He's got incredible qualities to occupy different spaces. Space invader. Um, in the attacking phases, to threaten the goal, to link up play. When you have to be more direct, he'll give you that layout. Not only that, but I also think his contribution defensively is outstanding. His work rate, his effort, and his high press. He's got more to come, more games to come. He needs to improve the numbers, and I'm sure he will do that. He needs to stop diving, though, and be a bit stronger, but... Listen, he has produced decent numbers. Four assists, eight goals in the league. 
Yeah, what gel do you use? That's what they are, bro cream. On whether we have seen Kai Havertz best yet, he said, I don't think so. At this age, and he's just started with us in his first season, he's building those relationships. He's moving in those positions as well, and he's that good. And with the intelligent that he has, he can be much better. I'm being happy with our defensive record, he said, for sure. I talked about the first half of the organisation in the team in a defensive phase, then the desire the players have to keep clean sheets. Let's skip it. On De Zerbi's work at Brighton, um, two more Spanish managers going head-to-head. -head. He said, I'm very impressed. He's a top manager with top coaching staff. I think they're an unbelievable football club. What they have done deserves... Incredible credit, the way they run the club, the decisions, blah, blah, blah. I think Roberto has given a very clear style and the attractive way of playing football. They make life very difficult. I think there'll be goals tomorrow. And what more we need to do to win the title? He said, win more games. That's what we have to do. We're still not at the top. We have to transform it, that into winning and winning. That's the only way to have the chance in the last game. And whether he is surprised we have scored the most and conceded the fewest, but still aren't top. He said, this is the level. It's been the level in the league for the past six or seven years. The margins are small. Let's see those numbers at the end of the last game. Hopefully, if, they're met, if those are maintained, we have a good chance. Whether he is most pleased with the defensive or the scoring record, he said, only the winning one, that's the one I want. Obviously, the process is super important. At the end, you want that to reflect in the outcome. It's crazy with top scorers, best defence, and we're not top. Uh, is it is Deserbi Italian? No, you lot are winding me up. Breaking news. I thought you were I thought you was trolling me. He's Italian. Oh my days. I'm looking at him completely different now. Yeah, he's Italian. Oh my I got it all wrong. Because Real Madrid were after him, I thought oh he's gotta be Spanish. He's Italian, Italiano, Deserbi, Mamma Mia. Right, that's the last time I do that accent, but yeah, you knew what I was doing. He's 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 Italian. Big up the community. I would have been all over the place there. I thought it was a clash of the Spanish managers. Yeah, he's, he's definitely Italian. Uh, anyway, hey, that's what the community is there for. Get me out of a mess. Uh, on whether, imagine me in the press conference. Oh, a clash of the Spanish managers. He'd be like, bro, he's from Italy, man. What are you talking about? On whether he will watch our title rivals games, he said, I don't know. I have to feel it. Every game will be different. I think my wife and kids will have a big say on that as well. My little one will come and want to play with Lego. Well, they do call him Lego head manager, so or go outside and play football. But I think I'll watch the majority of the games. Um, for sure, it will be with them. On how much of his coaching philosophy is about stopping opponents. If you want to dominate the game, suffocate opponents, you have to have the ball. When yeah, let's let's skip it. That's the waffle. Um, on influencers, he had. <laughs> On influencers, he had in his management career. He said, "I learned a lot from all my coaches." Um, David Moyes is a really good example. Ain't that crazy? The guy played for Wenger, coached with Pep. And you're talking about David Moyes. Moyesy, Moyesy lad. Um, he's definitely trolling saying Lego. It's been a few weeks since Arsenal tripped up. I think, nah, relax, Nathan, man. We're going to beat Brighton. You make sure you handle Man United, bro. They got a draw for you at least. Um, he's gone with Moyesy. He said he's a really good example, not only in the sense, but in many other things that he does. I really admire so uh, you try to pick things there and blend it and make it your own. No disrespect, bro. Like I, I don't want you to pick up too much advice from David Moyes. You know, maybe yeah, maybe the defensive structure, but not too much else. You know, and not be involved in chaotic games very often. He said we've been involved in a few, probably not recently. I don't know. As a spectator and a football fan. Chelsea v United was a hell of a game. It was a mess of a game, but entertaining. And if he is worried about Bakayo burning out towards the end of the season, he said, I'm super positive. I think he's going to fly and be decisive. He's going to turn into a bird, people, and start flying. On his ability to recover from setbacks quick, he said he's so strong, how much he wants it. When you talk to him, how excited he is about what he's coming. He wants to be there. He's getting better and better. It's normal, normal to have little niggles. You have kicks, and he's gone through a lot of that in the last two or three years does need to stop limping at the end of every game. I feel like he does it every single week. Um, no disrespect equals respect. Yeah, uh, uh, e No disrespect equals disrespect. You're right. I think when that gets said, it's like, all right, I'm going to say something that's going to disrespect you now. Um, I believe I can fly, says Jake. Well, that was a banging song, but due to the guy who sang it, we're going to have to delete off the playlist. Um, on if Emil is part of his plans going forward, he says, yes, I look at him and what happened in the last two seasons 
what happened three seasons ago as well. Take all that. It's the best thing that could have happened for him in his career if he uses it in the right way. Don't look back and say, if, if. No, this happened. Use it. That was the best thing that could have happened. I had a great moment. I had a difficult moment. Now I know what I want and how to deal with that. That's going to make me a much better player. You can see the hell of a player that we have in him when he's fit and playing at that level. Come on, ESR. The story goes on. On Rob Edwards saying we have no weaknesses. He said, I see them. Managers probably see all the time. We don't have them rather. We actually have. And, uh, let's skip it. On the areas we can improve, I cannot tell you this. I think we have many areas. It's nearly over, people. I hope you're still awake. On if we are winning games in the tunnel by intimidating teams with our aura. Wow. I mean, I know Vieira and Omri and them people who say they're intimidating. Still not sure they're that intimidated when they look at, you know, Odegaard and, you know. Nah, listen, they're good players. They're not as uh, dominating as Vieira's and them guys were. He said, it's difficult to have the feeling of what opponents are feeling. I've been in the tunnel playing with a different shirt, looking at the Invincibles, and I did have the feeling that tonight is going to be really tough. Hopefully we can create that, and that's something very positive for the team. Waffle over, syrup done, Aura FC. I mean, um, it's pretty hard to have Aura when Odegaard's uh, about to break out in tears when he hears um, North London forever, and he's got goosebumps um, going. That's just as he wipes the snot out of his nose, by the way. But anyway, I don't care what you do as long as you lead us to the title. Maybe he could lift the Premier League trophy with snot on his hands, you know, I'm sure that's never been done, so that would be epic, you know, we're, we're here to make history, people. Anyway, let's concentrate. What is the team? Let's end that poll, by the way, let's end that poll. What was the poll? Sesco Jokerez. Who do you want? Jokerez, 89%, 11% Sesco. The, the community have well and truly spoken. How do we line up against Brighton people is the simple question. Uh, apologies, Saki said I'm having lunch. How do we line up? I want to know your thoughts and opinions because there's a few things to consider. Number one, we play Bayern Munich on Tuesday. But I don't think we can pick a team with Bayern Munich in mind because if you do that, before you know it, you could have... You could have lost this game and the title race is a mess. So you could, we actually can't think about that. We've got to go what we think is the right team. Now, let's pick this team. Um, interesting that... Oh, Thomas Tuchel has just said, Manuel Neuer, Kingsley Coman and Leroy Sané will not be in the squad this weekend. They all have problems and are all doubtful for the Arsenal game. I mean, read of that, read into that what you will. Could be playing mind games, but listen, it would be great if they had no, no Neuer, no Sané and no Kingsley Coman. Right, how do we line up? David Raya in goal. Brick wall at centre-back. Um, right back Ben White. In fact, he's a former Brighton player. Game will mean a lot to him. And I am going Tommy Asu. I'm going Tommy Asu. Brighton are good. They're lively. They'll have a go at us. Zinchenko, no. Played the other night. Got on the ball defensively. And then you've got Kivio. But I just think it's time to get Tommy Asu back into this team. I want the strongest le the strongest guy at left back. Do you guys think Tommy Asu or Zinni? Who are we going for? It's definitely not Zinni. Are you going Kivior or Tommy Asu? I'm going Tommy Asu. I'm going Tommy Asu. I think that is our strongest back four available. The midfield. <sighs> what am I thinking here in midfield? What am I thinking here in midfield? Tommy Asu needs minutes to get ready for Leroy Sané. Kivio, Kivio, let's get one thing clear, right? And I want to make this abundantly clear. I don't want Kivio on the pitch on Tuesday night against Leroy Sané, if Leroy Sané plays. I do not. I'm sorry, Kivio, you've done well. You've done a job. I don't want Kivio at left back against Leroy Sané. No, 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 no. You don't... Right, you, you know the song. I don't want... Kivio will get cooked. That Kiwi will not be ripe. It can't happen. 
Tomeyasu, game time against Brighton. Now, I'm going to be totally honest. I want to play Thomas Partey. But my concern is, the guy's been out since August. Can he play Wednesday and then play on Saturday? I don't know. That is the question. If he can, if he's fit, and the manager thinks he's recovered and he's fine, then I'm I'm playing it. I'm playing him. We still didn't see the part A Rice combination on Wednesday because Rice was on the bench. I'm playing that. This game's too big. You're asking a lot of him. I'm, you, I think you get 60 minutes out of him and take him off and then you save him for Bayern Munich. I think this is our best midfield. Now, I'm not sure he will play. I think he might play... He might play Jorginho, in my opinion. What's interesting as well, by the way, people, let's say Part A isn't fit enough. He could go for this. Bear in mind, Smith Rowe's just got man of the match. Now, even though I don't agree, I don't think he was man of the match, he could go with he could go with Smith Rowe, Odegaard, and Rice. It just seems a bit attacking for Brighton. And I don't think he will do that. I think he will probably go Jorginho. I just think he will look at um, part A and think maybe you're not quite ready to play two games in three days. That's what I think he will play. I think he'll go with that. But my team would be Thomas part A. Until I know he's not fit enough, he's playing as far as I'm concerned. Right, let's go into the front line. It's a tough one as well because Trossard against his former club did all right the the other night. Um, but I'm going with Gabriel Martinelli. If he's fit, I'm going with Gabby. I want to see Gabriel Martinelli playing because I am thinking a little bit ahead here. If you're playing Bayern Munich, you want Martinelli on the left, not Trossard, because of the pace. He's our quickest attacking player. We need to get him ready for Bayern. So I'm playing Martinelli. I'm playing Saka. And I suppose I've got to stick with Havertz. He's in his best run of form. Uh, you know, no diving. That would be my team for Brighton. I think that beats Brighton. I think it's too solid. It's too good defensively. I think it beats them. There's two players... Maybe three players there that I'm not sure whether Arteta will pick. First one is Tommy Asu. The second one is Part A. The third one is Martinelli. Saka will play if he's fit. I'm just not sure. Do you guys agree with that team? Or would you change anything? Let me know. Uh, Ali said he would play Jesus up front, not Havertz. Stanley said that's a great team. South London's fine. He said blitz them in the first 30, then take players off. Well, that's what you want to do. You hope we're ahead. We're comfortable. You can take them off. Uh, Arsenal above all said Big C don't you really want to see the Bayern 11 in action before that game makes sense to play what you've picked yeah exactly that's what I mean if we're going oh let's like I, you don't want Kivior at left back against Bayern Munich trust me you, I don't think you want Jorginho in midfield against Bayern Munich against Goretzka and Kimmich and Musiala they've got a lot of movement in there I want Partey in there with Rice and Odegaard it's just whether he can play that many games so he must have had a hole in his foot. You're not wrong, bro. Martinelli did some serious damage to his foot that night. I just think with Havertz, he's in his he's in his best run. I think with strikers, you don't really need to change that much. I think you just leave him and let him keep playing. Um, Bosch J said that squad should be the one we use going forward. I mean, that's our best team. You could argue a fully fit Timber would go in at left back. Apart from that, at the moment, in form, that's where we're at. Fermo says Jesus for Saka. If Saka's fit, he's got to play. So you've got to understand, people. One slip-up in this title race, it could be over. Especially in a game like this. This is a hard game, but if you looked at the fixture list, we got harder games. Tottenham away, Man United away. Is a more difficult game, in my opinion. Um, 
So we can't afford to be like, oh, maybe let's rest Saka for Tuesday. Bro, this is the most important game of the season. On Tuesday, that becomes the most important game and then the next game. So we can't kind of look past this game and think, well, we'll give Saka a rest. No chance. Joseph said Kivior v Bayern. Tommy is not the answer, bro. Respectfully, I disagree. I disagree. I think Tommy Asu is a better defender than Kivior, a better 1v1 defender than Kivior. Kivior has had a decent run, but he is not the answer, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. You know, it's not a fact, it's just my opinion. Also, as I keep saying, I like the fact that Tommy Asu is right footed because that means if he's playing against, for example, Leroy Sane, Sane is going to drift inside onto his left foot. Tommy Asu is on his strong side here where it's the opposite with Kivio. Um, so for me, it's, it's got to be. You could be right, though. You could be right, you know. Maybe Tommy Asu is not fully fit yet. So I don't know. Sane is a doubt for Tuesday. I really, really hope he doesn't play that game, honestly. Leroy Sane is lethal. Um, for those just tuned in, Thomas Tuchel's just done his press conference. Uh, and Tuchel has said, uh, Manuel Neuer, Kingsley Coman and Leroy Sané will not be in the squad for this weekend. They all have problems and they are all a doubt for the Arsenal game as well. Now, I'm not going to get excited about that. You know, that could be mind games. They're not going to play at the weekend. He could be resting them for the Arsenal game. And remember, as Ali says, no Bayern Munich fans at the Emirates on Tuesday. But anyway, that's the team I would go with. And um, Kingsley Cone Man, yeah, the Cone Man himself. Uh, and LT said Sané hasn't scored since October. Listen, it's not just about goals with him. That guy is lethal. He's direct, he's quick, and he can dribble. Um, listen, looking ahead to the game, just finally, it's a must-win game for Arsenal. It's a massive, massive game. Uh, I love the fact that the games are coming thick and fast. We play tomorrow. Then we play on Tuesday, then we play next Sunday against Villa, then we play on Wednesday against Bayern again the week after. So as a content creator, as a fan, it's brilliant and uh, we have to embrace it and enjoy it. But we need results. We need results and uh, this is a massive game. I think we're going to beat Brighton. I think we're going to beat them. I'm going to go 2-0-2-1. Two, two I mean, Jao Pedro's back. Enciso's back as well. Matoma's not back, but they haven't got many players out injured now. Um, it would be great if we could keep a clean sheet there, but um, they may trouble us a little bit going forward. But, I, you know, a clean sheet would guarantee a win. I think we will definitely score. So let's go 2-0. Let's go 2-0, but uh, it'll be interesting what team he does pick. Somebody asking in the comments, um, Bayern Munich fans threw fireworks on the pitch against Lazio, so UEFA has banned their fans from going to any away, uh, for this leg of the away game. Um, so yeah, no away fans. So 60,000 Arsenal fans at the Emirates. 2-0, Scrappy 1-0 or 2-1. Harlick says 3-0. Saliba says 1-0 to Arsenal, just get the job done. Firmal says 3-1 or 2-0. What we're really hoping for is that after 60 minutes, we're like, 3-0 up, and then you can go, right, Declan Rice off, Saka off, and then you can think about Tuesday, but I'm not sure whether we will get to that point in this game. I think this is a very tough game. I would take any win in this game, I've got to be honest. Yeah, it's a scrappy one and uh, a difficult one. Sam has said, we have been spoilt with goals lately, so when Luton come, we were wanting the same. I think Arteta was looking at April. I think you're right, Sam has, and I think they, they reserved energy, they rotated, and I think it worked well. So I've got no problem with that. Uh, people, thank you very much for tuning in today. Really appreciate your support. As always, yeah, Evan Ferguson audition. He's been linked with Arsenal. He's been on the bench a lot this season. It's uh, Welbeck and João Pedro. Um, tomorrow, 5.30 kickoff. I'll be live from 4.30 p.m. Uh, Brighton against Arsenal. Tough game. Um, I'm not going to do the Man City Palace watch-along because I'm busy in the day. Um, and then on Sunday, I will be doing the watch-along for Manchester United against Liverpool. So, um, lots going off over the weekend. Then Monday, we'll review the game and also be previewing Bayern Munich. 
then Bayern Munich watch along on uh, Tuesday. And I'll also be on AFTV preview on Monday as well at the Emirates. So loads of content. Big up to everyone. Enjoy your Friday. Looking forward to the game tomorrow. Hopefully we're three point collecting. Hopefully Crystal Palace can do us a favour. 12.30 kickoff. Take care. I'll see you all tomorrow for match day. Bless. <laughs>